Hello, I am here to tell you why you should invest in thermal solar energy. So, I chose this energy, one, because with my pale skin and everything, Sun and I's relationship is not that great. So, this is a good little bonder here. Um, based on the basic knowledge I knew before looking into this type of energy, it is a green form of energy that um, does not pollute the air as much as, or even that, like, even if it does pollute the air as much as all the other energies that use, like, the combustion of fossil fuels, and I just like the concept of solar energy. I always just get excited when I see, like, a solar panel or something. This isn't, this isn't that, but it's a form of that, sort of, so I just get excited. So. Let's just hit you with bad news first. Disadvantages of this type of energy. Um, one, high costs. It costs a lot to transport the equipment for um, the sol solar thermal plants. Um, and it's also $3.83 per watt of energy um, for just people actually using and buying the energy. It uses quite a lot of water, um, which isn't great. <laughs> they are trying to look into solutions like using ocean water, but that would mean moving the plants near the coastline, which isn't ideal either. Um, most of them are in deserts at this point, and again, using a lot of water, being in the desert, being dry, and without water, um, not totally great, but okay um with being in the desert it impacts desert wildlife because with the solar thermal plants they are quite big and there isn't a size variation between them like there would be with like using solar panels which is so photovoltaic energy um so it has to be the same general size it can't be smaller than that and it's pretty big um with again being in deserts or having to be in the coastline there are very limited locations with where you can actually build these um plants because it has to have um a high amount of solar radiation and then lastly again um with money and financing the startup of a project like this is pretty difficult for most people to do. Advantages! So, at the beginning, like I was saying, with the fossil fuels, it costs a lot of money to buy these fossil fuels and it keeps increasing as the years go on. So, there's no fuel cost for this, which is great. Um, it is has a predictable 24-7 um, power. Um, it's not intermittent like with the solar photovoltaic um, energy, which is the solar panels that's only giving you a current of energy um, and a supply of energy throughout the day while the sun is out. Or like with wind energy, which is intermittent intermittent with nature and when there's wind um this sort um stores the energy in the form of molten salts and is converting and storing that energy in a generator so it's 24 7 unlike some of the other renewable sources of energy um with again on my base knowledge, confirmed, uh, no pollution or global warming effects. Um, I do know um, that it does release um, more CO2 than wind turbines, but again, it's not a terrible pollutant at this point compared to most of the fossil fuels. And, and that just seems to be one of its biggest advantages at this point. And then, with being in the desert, there's no one living in the desert, so it is not 
um, bothering anyone in more populated areas. So, next, getting all sciencey, I'm going to go on about how this works, which is a little complicated. So, it is in two forms. It's like either called concentrating solar thermal or concentrating solar power, um, which is unlike the photovoltaic energy, which directly takes the sunlight and the energy from the sunlight and um, is more so to power things like you see them on the calculators or like watches or powering um, remote areas, the thermal solar power is to more so power a population than a remote area. Um, so this type of energy is generating the energy indirectly, again, um, to be compared to the um, solar PV power, short for photovoltaic. Um, because it is taking the solar energy and converting it to thermal energy, which then gets converted to um, mechanical energy. So, there are two, um, there are a whole bunch of different systems that are used, but the two um, common categories um, are passive, which requires no equipment. It's like a metaphor example that doesn't really relate to producing power <laughs> is like you leave your car out in the sun and it, it's getting hot inside. There was no equipment that was used to um, create that heat and store it in the car. No equipment required. But with active, it requires some way to absorb, collect, and store the solar radiation. Um, with this energy, it is usually done, well, it's done through a power plant, and the most common form, there's chimneys and towers and a bunch of other forms, but the most common form is the parabolic trough, which is shaped like a pipe with a linear parabolic-shaped reflector that's covered with over 900,000 mirrors. A lot. That is a lot of mirrors. And these parabolic troughs um, pivot to follow the sun as it moves throughout the day. Um, so with the actual troughs and the reflectors, they are taking the sun, the photons, and concentrating that energy. These photons are hitting silicon atoms and that energy is transferred into loose electrons. These electrons are excited, it's becoming kinetic energy, all of that, and this is flu heating a fluid, which is not the water, it is a fluid. This fluid heats the water, um, and in some cases is heated further, um, through the process, if it's not hot enough to produce steam, this steam spins a turbine to create mechanical energy, and this mechanical energy is then powering a generator. Simple, right? So cool. You might be questioning, Emma, it's all energy, but where is the electricity in all of this? Let me tell you. So, when the electrons are being excited, they are changing to different layers of the cell. And when changing between these layers, um, an electrical charge is created between those two layers. And that's where all this electricity begins. So it is solar energy. I wish I had a picture, Not, don't know how to edit a picture there, but just imagine like beautiful editing of a picture or something. We have solar energy, then we have 
the kinetic energy from the electrons. This kinetic energy, thermal energy, then mechanical energy into the generator to become electricity to power all your life's hopes and needs. So that is why mine is so great. Like if you're thinking about the other ones, nuclear, if a word can be used in the same sentence or in junction with the word bomb, I don't think that's a good source of energy. Coal, coal, what a fossil fuel, what a fuel. Um, if people associate that with being given to naughty kids, clearly bad. Wind, again, it's not always windy outside, unless you want to have like some donkeys doing some weird horizontal thing with a wind turbine or something. It's not totally reliable. Geothermal, man, poisonous gases are coming out from those drilling sites and are very harmful to the people around them. And then hydroelectric, I just see that, you know, with dams and everything, that is just taking jobs from hardworking beavers. Solar thermal, it's not taking any jobs. It's just a beautiful little sun in the sky being like, oh my gosh, I'm going to help you with my little radiation stuff and I'm going to give you energy and electricity. Thank you. Please enjoy my energy and invest in my project.